Hello everyone, Mr. Sadler here. Time for lecture number six, entitled Units of Measurement. So I'm just going to go ahead and write that down. Lecture number six, Units of Measurement. So you guys at home watching this, you should be taking notes with me on this side. If I'm writing it over here, it's probably really important and uh, I'm going to be collecting notes at some time throughout the year uh, for credit, so just make sure you're doing it. You're going to have to get into the habit anyway since uh, high school and college is all about taking notes. So uh, last, last lecture we were talking about the beauty of science okay, and all the different things that come out of, out of this uh, out of this branch of knowledge that we call science. So now I want to give you an introduction to understanding how it's so powerful. And if you wanna know what science is all about, it's all about measurement, okay? Science is completely based in things you and I can measure. So I'm literally gonna say that science equals, or I'll say, Science is based in measurement. Sorry if my uh, handwriting's a little weird. You'll get used to it real quick. This is really important, guys. This is a huge. This is a huge point, and a lot of people miss it. And I don't think they. A lot of people understand that science is really only based on things you and I can measure. Science doesn't like doesn't make huge claims and then never and then never proves them. Okay? You and I measure things all this all the time and we're going to learn how, but science science itself is based in those measurements. There's nothing scientific about anything that we can't measure. Okay? So ideas and thoughts and if basically if you can't measure it, science is not interested. That's more or less uh, the, the point here okay we measure things all the time and you you do this throughout your life uh, when you look at a clock for example you're really measuring time right if it's 1210 and then five minutes pass and it's 1215 you just made a measurement five minutes is a measurement one minute is a measurement one second is a measurement when you look at a ruler you're measuring distance. When you use a ruler to, to figure out how long something is or figure out what the distance is between two places, you're making a measurement, right? So this is important. Let's get a new color in here. Distance, what is distance? Okay, there's another, people call these different things, right? Length. Length is another one. If you if you measure the length of a rope, you're really measuring the distance from the end from one end of the rope to the other. Distance is the space from one spot to another. All right. So from one spot to the second spot the space in between these two things is called distance. Okay, you may have heard of distance measurements in the United States, for example, inches, feet, yards, miles. Okay, you, these are the ones you and I are familiar with. When you place something on a scale, you are measuring a mass. So I'm sure you guys have, uh, you guys have a uh, uh, kitchen at home. Uh, you might have a scale in the kitchen. Some people like to weigh things as they're cooking. Uh, when you place uh, anything onto a scale and the scale shows, shows uh, a number, you're measuring mass, okay? It's an, again, another measurement. So let's make sure we know what a ma what mass is. Mass is 
determined by the number, and I'm not gonna write out number, I'm just gonna write uh, hashtag. As you get better at notes, you'll, you'll start to make shortcuts for yourself. For example, writing out number takes me a lot longer to do than like that, right? And they both mean the same thing. Hashtag means number. But anyway, mass is determined by the number and type of atoms inside matter. Okay. The number, if you have a thousand atoms, it'll, it'll, uh, if you have a thousand atoms of hydrogen, it's not going to be as heavy or it'll be less heavy than a billion atoms of hydrogen. Also the type of atoms inside matter, uh, inside matter, uh, are significant. Uh, for example, uh, hydrogen is lighter than, uh, iron, for example. So an iron bar would weigh more than a balloon of hydrogen. But just know that mass is determined by the number and type of atoms inside matter. We're gonna explore mass a little bit more. We're just getting a definition right now. Okay, so I want you to think of a number that doesn't have a unit, okay? Just think of a, the number three. What does that even mean? Three, you know, Think of someone like looking, looking out the window, right? They're looking out the window and you're standing over here doing something, right? Looking in this direction and they go, whoa, there's three out there. And then you turn, you turn to the guy and you say, three what? Right? You would automatically do that because three means nothing. Uh, think about this. If someone just walked up to you and said three, Right? Your natural response again is going to be three what? Right? Three paper clips, three eyeballs, three kiwis, three tennis balls, uh, three bananas, uh, three coffee cups. I mean, three what? Okay? You've got to understand that numbers without units are useless in science okay don't go ahead, don't go telling your math teacher that oh we need a unit for this number in mathematics it's more abstract you don't necessarily need units in math because you're just doing abstract algebra and stuff like that. Abstract meaning you're not talking about physical objects. Sometimes you are, and if you are ever talking about physical objects, then you need to use a unit. Three kiwis, th three paper clips, three tennis balls. When I say three tennis balls, what is the measurement? The measurement is the, the number three. That's the thing we measured, right? Just sitting and looking and counting these tennis balls is an act of measurement. The tennis balls, right, three tennis balls, is the unit, three tennis balls. And you know what's interesting is if you set it the other way around, if you just set a unit, then it's also useless, right? If someone had a bucket of tennis balls and you're across the room and they say, and you go, Hey, how many tennis balls are in there? And they look at you and go tennis balls. It's like, well, how many are there? One half, one half tennis balls, 300 tennis balls. I mean, you've got to have a measurement and a unit in order for, in order for it to make sense. I'll put in order to make sense, right? You got to have a measurement plus a unit. Okay. So you already know, you already use units in your everyday life. Just in that example that I just showed you, you really just haven't realized it yet. When you say a number, when you say a number, 
you automatically follow that number with what the number is representing, in this case, a unit, right? Three girls. Three basketballs. Uh, three coffee mugs. Okay. The measurement itself is three. Each one of these measurements is three. You count the three girls, one, two, three. You count the basketballs, one, two, three. You count the, mug, mag, uh, the mugs, one, two, three. The unit, okay, describes what the number is representing. So I'm actually gonna put up here, the number is the measurement, right? And the unit is the, uh, is describes what the number is representing. I'm gonna put, describes the, uh, let's say describes the measurement, right? In order to count this, not this, this number, you had to make a measurement, but which measurement is it? Is it girls? Is it basketballs? Like what, what were you measuring? Okay. So the things that we're going to measure in seventh grade are these, these five things, and you're going to need to know them. So I'm going to say measurements in seventh grade. Well, and eighth grade, actually. This is just to start off, guys. For example, in seventh grade, they'll only do this. In eighth grade, we're actually going to add a couple more measurements to this. But these are where, you, these are where you've got to start. If you're ever going to understand science, you need to understand the relationship between measurements and units, numbers and units. Whenever, whenever, uh, or whenever we measure, whatever we measure, excuse me, whatever we measure will be a number, right? Just like this, five apples, six meters, 1.5 seconds, 13 kilograms, 60 milliliters. So here's the measurement, five, and the unit is apples. Six meters is the measurement of distance. 1.5 seconds, that's a measurement of time. 13 kilograms, that's a measurement of mass. 60 milliliters, that is a measurement of volume. So this may seem new to you, maybe you guys have seen this before, I know my eighth graders have seen this before, but you have to be familiar with these things. For example, when I say, what kind of measurement is 1.5 seconds? You have to immediately know that it's time, right? You can't think seconds and mix it up with distance. Okay, so that's why we're gonna, sp that's why we're gonna spend some time understanding these measurements in these units because this is the basis of science guys so stick with me let's get your basis in and then we can explore the really cool stuff so we've got distance we've got volume we've got mass we've got time and we've got temperature okay now, let's just define these while we're here. Distance, because we already had it up before, but we can do it again. Space between two points. Okay, that's what distance really is. It's the space between two points. What's volume? Volume is actually the space an object takes up in three dimensions. And we're gonna look at some examples of that. Distance is two dimensional, right? Remember, well, I guess it's technically one dimension because it's, it's going from here to here, but we don't live in a one dimensional world and it's very difficult to imagine one dimension, but we'll just call it two dimensions. Three dimensions is this. Let me go back here. Okay, so here's here's one dimension, here's the second dimension, and here's the third dimension. Okay, so a cube, for example, is a three-dimensional object. Let's see, that's 3D. A flat sheet of paper is two-dimensional. I guess we can call this one. A line is one dimensional. So 
uh, I'll, let's just call this one dimension. Space between two points, distance is one dimensional. Let's not confuse you. Two dimensional would be things like area, if you've ca calculated area before. Three dimensional is volume. So volume is the space an object takes up in three dimensions. I'm just gonna check my time. Okay, so mass, what's mass? Mass is, uh, we, we defined it last or last slide, but we're just gonna do it one more time. Uh, mass is dependent on number of atoms and types of atoms. We're gonna spend more time on mass because you guys gotta know what atoms are and you gotta know what types of atoms are. Time, now time's a weird one. Time is very difficult. Time is a very difficult thing to measure. Uh, and we're just going to, uh, we're gonna define it loosely. Uh, time is a dimension that allows things to occur okay it's it's actually a dimension so you know how we have three dimensions of space well there's another dimension called time which all of these dimensions move through okay imagine if we didn't have time things would just be frozen and no one would ever move and it would be pretty boring time is a deep one T time is very difficult to understand actually uh, temperature 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 is a measurement of molecular motion. Measure, oh, I, I missed an E in there. That's gonna bother me. Measurement of molecular motion. You're probably sitting here going, Mr. Sather, what the heck is molecular motion? You're just going to have to wait because we're going to all explore, both 7th and 8th grade both explore temperature. So we'll look into this later. So just write it down, trust me, and we'll explore it later. So I hope I've gotten this across to you that a number is completely useless without a, without a unit. It just doesn't mean anything. So for example, on your exams and your, um, your homeworks and stuff like that, when I give you a problem, right, number one, and da 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 and then at the end I say, what, for example, what is the uh, distance, right? What's the distance between these two objects, or how far did the guy run? Something like that. If you just put, like, a number, like three, and then circle it, it's wrong. If you put three meters it'll probably be right. If that's if the meters are the right unit, that'll be right. Because why? Because you if in science, you both have to have a measurement and a unit. Okay? I never want to see just a number ever. Cuz a number is completely useless without a unit in science. You will always use units when making measurements, okay? And I hope I've made this point pretty clear. So, uh in that way, when we make measurements, all the numbers we report will have meaning, okay? Uh, science cannot work with just numbers. You can't just say three, you can't just say seven, you can't just say 100,000. You've got to give it a unit. You've got to put a unit at the end to describe what the heck you're talking about. What three cars, seven birds, a hundred thousand dollars, a hundred thousand birds, right? I hope I'm getting the point across that numbers in and of themselves have absolutely no meaning without a unit, all right? Now, there are some common units in science that I need you to know. Now, we already have, uh, we've already written these down, uh, so it shouldn't be that hard to write them down again. Distance, time, volume, mass, temperature okay make yourself a little graph now look what it says here metric unit this is incredibly important guys because these are the units that science uses metric unit 
Okay, we're only going to use metric units in this class. I might start you off with some English units and I've, I've highlighted them in red because I don't want to use them. And they're all the ones that you're used to using, right? You're, you know your height and feet probably. You use inches all the time because we have, we have uh, uh, sticks called rulers that have inches on them. We have yardsticks. I have a yardstick in the front of my room that I use to point at the board and stuff. We talk about miles, right, all the time. Uh, seconds are the same, thankfully. Ounces, cups, quarts, pints, gallons, ounces, pounds, tons, degrees Fahrenheit. We're not going to use any of that. What we are going to use is metric units. We're going to use meters with the symbol M or kilometers, KM. Uh, ooh, ooh, I'm sorry guys, I've, I've messed this up. I'm sorry, let me back up just a bit. Let me draw this again. Sorry about that. Metric unit. Okay, so the distance distance units are meters and kilometers. Okay, now meters has the symbol M. Uh, some examples, I guess I could put some examples over here. 50 meters. Uh, kilometers has the symbol KM. 100 kilometers would be a good example. Time. Time is always in seconds, which is nice. There's also minutes. Okay, seconds is usually S. Minutes, I always say, is M I N. There's also hours, too, right? Hours, days, weeks, years, uh, decades, centuries. But we're only going to use seconds, minutes, and hours for the most part. So I usually put R, HRS or HR, either one. So 10 seconds would be a good example of a time measurement. Uh, 12 minutes is a good another example. Uh, 24 hours in a day, right? 24 hours, that's, a, that's an, another time measurement. What about volume? Okay, so look over at the metric units again. The volume, volume units are going to be liters or milliliters. Liters, milliliters. Okay, liters, the symbol is a big L. The milliliter symbol is little m, big L. Okay, so 50 liters. Or how about this one? 3.6 liters per gallon, right? How about a hundred milliliters? Or let's do one better, a thousand milliliters, which is one liter. I, I know these guys might be, this this might be new to you guys, but it, we're gonna use it all the time, you'll get used to it. Mass, mass is always given as grams. It's also given as kilograms. You may see that, you may have seen that we had kilometers as well. So what's up with this kilo here? Okay, that's a prefix for a thousand. So let's uh, let's tell you that grams is usually in G, kilograms is usually in kg. A thousand grams is a is a mass measurement, right? One kilogram is also a mass measurement, and there's actually a thousand grams in one kilogram. That's what kilo means. It means a thousand. Temperature. Temperature will always be in degrees Celsius, okay? Whoops, like that. For example, uh, water boils at 100 degrees Celsius. I wanted to just show you guys some distance or length examples, right? This girl, if you measured from, ooh, 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 if you measured from here to here, it would be a smaller distance or length, these two are the same thing, than the distance from here to here. So in, in the real world, we say that this guy is taller than this girl, right? Uh, you, 
could measure the distance from one end of the book to another, that would also be a length or a distance. And we could measure it in meters, uh, we can measure in inches, whatever. But in science, we're always going to use the metric units. I do want you to know this uh, measurement conversion. I want you to know uh, that one km, one kilometer, is equal to a thousand meters. Okay. It's also 0.62 miles. I'm not too worried about this though. I, I, I'm going to add one more to this. One liter. Okay, so this was, this was distance. This one's volume. One liter is equal to a thousand milliliters. Let's go over some time examples real fast. Uh, you know what? Actually, no, we're good. We'll, get, we'll, we'll finish this up. So let's look at some time examples. Uh, if we're going to measure time. The time it takes to walk from Mr. Sadler's class to Miss Adams' class will be 15 seconds. And again, what do we use to measure time? A clock. The time it takes to eat your lunch, maybe it's 20 minutes or 12, 1200 seconds. Uh, here's another example. The time it takes for you to fully rest should be about eight hours. Eight hours is about 28,800 seconds. That's a lot of seconds when you think about it. The average lifespan of the average human now this is kind of crazy. 79 years is the average age on the planet, which is 2,491,000,000 seconds. So everyone will live on average, let's just call it 2.5, let's round up 2.5 billion seconds. The time it takes to fully rest, I'm not sure why I uh, repeated that one. How do we measure time? You should know immediately if I ask you, how do we measure time? You should be saying it out loud uh, for the online students. You measure with a clock. You've got to know as soon as I ask, okay, how do we measure time? You say clock. How do we measure distance? Or with a ruler or a measuring tape or whatever, okay? So something that has markings on it to tell you what the distance is between one point and another point. I also want you guys to know uh, these uh, time unit conversions. So there are, uh, let me just put this down, time conversions. Because we're going we're gonna to focus on converting some of these things together. You, should gotta, you gotta be comfortable with this, right? For example, there are 60 seconds in one minute. There are 60 minutes in one hour. There are 24 hours in one day. And there are 365 days in one year. Okay, so this is nice, right? This is a good way to uh, say it, right? In English, 60 seconds in one minute, 60 minutes in one hour. But we don't do this in science and mathematics. We use ratios. What is a ratio? It's one number over another number. Well, I should, I should say one number plus unit another number plus unit, right? Here's the number, here's the unit. Here's the number, here's the unit. So uh, let's change the color real fast. 60 seconds, 60 seconds in one minute is really this, 60 seconds per one minute. Okay, this, this line right here, you can say per. There are 60 minutes per hour. You could put one hour if you wanted. There are 24 hours per day. There are 
365 days per year. Okay, so I want you guys to get used to using these things we call ratios per something per something. We're going to use them all the time, especially especially in science. You've got to get used to this. Uh, the reason the reason for that is we can use them to uh, uh, to to calculate things. So you have to be able to get used to and get comfortable using ratios, and we're going to be doing that all week. Okay, that's all I've got for you guys. I'll see you uh, tomorrow. Okay, bye bye.